ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon. I'm excited to be here with you. I hope you're listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network or watching us on YouTube or on Broadway World. You know, we are excited. We've had the pleasure of having a lot of the California Dreams cast on the show. There's two shows coming up in California this July. So I need you to stand down, get ready, let's go, get a ticket, come on down. For this, If you're born in the early 80s, like I am allegedly, then you know you grew up with the show. Our next guest has no stranger to teaching, which is something that I do, is no strangers to theater, but has had success. So that is a stranger to me. Aaron Jackson is here. Welcome to the round table. Hello, Robert. How are you? I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. Welcome. And thanks for being here with us. Yeah, of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. When you look back, when you meet people and you you get the chance to talk to, about your history, you get the chance to talk about growing up on television, coming up in a certain time on NBC, all those years that you did the show. Um, what is it like to look back on it now? Great question. I. It's all such a blur. I know that sounds crazy, but it was 30 years ago. And, you know, my dad always told me when I was a kid that I had to stop and smell the roses sometimes. And I think through a lot of that journey, I don't know that I really stopped and smelled the roses. Um, and it, it's a shame. I mean, I've got all this nostalgic stuff sitting in my in my studio here. And I, I can point out stuff from the show that I, that I either stole or I <laughs> borrowed. I borrowed it just permanently. Um, but then... Um, but it, it was it was an amazing time to grow up on the show. I mean, I I had just finished college and I was I was young. I mean, I was I was still under twenty one when I got cast, um, and I was in L A for such a short period of time when I got the jam. So it was a good gig. I know. Don't you hate people like that that just go to L A and then book a gig in a minute? Uh, yeah. Dude, I was at the right place at the right time. I I had um, I don't know that I had I don't know that I had the talent. To be quite honest with you. Um, I think it was more so, um, I was just, I think I was with, I fit what they're looking for. Maybe I think that's what it was, you know, um, I don't know. Where were you from originally? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like, what was the decision that was like, I'm going to go to LA and become an actor? My, uh, oh, that's a great story too. Um, I, I had, I had done a stint in, in the United Kingdom for college and I came back to Pittsburgh and it was in uh, November I came back. December. And um, my dad's like, cool. So what's next? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And he goes, well, you, you need a plan. And I'm like, I don't know. He goes, well, what's your backup plan to being an actor? And I said, I don't really have one. He goes, yeah, you've got to have a backup plan. Like you got to have something just in case. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll become a plumber. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, I'll help everybody else flush their dreams down the toilet. And, and then, like joking aside, like that's really what I wanted. Like it was like I, I knew nothing more than than truly being a performer. So I had a next door neighbor. I call him next door neighbor. I lived in a, in a, in a small town. So um, but one of my neighbors, uh, his name was Ed. Um, <laughs> such an awful name. No disrespect to anyone named Ed. No, <laughs> poor Ed. <laughs> poor Ed. <laughs> Ed. But um, Ed, I, I convinced Ed um, to, to pack up and move to L.A. with me. And I had an Eagle Talon TSI Turbo with T-tops. It was green. And I bought it. Like, it was, I, I bought it with my own money. Like, I was, I was that kid that, that I, I was in a film. I was in a picture years prior to that. And it was uh, Lorenzo's Oil with Nick Nolte and Susan Sarandon. And I bought this car. Like, this was, like, this was my car. And so I didn't need permission to, to leave because it was my car. And my dad was supportive anyway. But I packed up everything I owned, which was like a duffel bag worth of crap. <laughs> That's really all it was. And um, I, I, uh, I moved to L.A. I moved into a small duplex in the middle of Alhambra, which is, for those that don't know Alhambra, it's like, it's, it's the California, like Chinatown. Like, like the McDonald's uh, menu is in Chinese. Like every, everybody around me was Chinese. And here's me, this, this, you know. Lose you? No, there we are. We're back. We're Thought back. I lost. Okay, I we're back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't have a pot to pee in or a window to throw it out of, but I knew that I needed to be in LA. And um, 
I had a business card from a woman by the name of Karen Divisek with Divisek Casting. And I'd met years ago at, and, and she had said, when you get out to Hollywood, kid, look me up. You know, that, that's like the Hollywood term, right? When you get to Hollywood, look me up. I'm going to make you a star. And um, she did. Like she, she introduced me to a woman by the name of Beverly Dean. And I walked into Beverly Dean's office um, and Beverly's deceased now, but Beverly uh, used to work for CBS and she was the psychic for CBS for a lot of years. She would read a pilot. If the pilot was good, they would green light it, you know, true story. And uh, she knew Peter Engel very, very well. And she called up Peter and was like, Hey, I, I got this boy. So I'll stop there for a second and go back to, to her story. Then I'll come back to, to the rest of the, the, Beverly Dean story. So I, I walk into um, her office and someone had set this meeting up for me. Karen did. And there was this guy by the name of Jim. No idea who Jim Caviezel was. He was just some dude sitting in there. There's another guy by the name of Kevin Sorbo. He was a nobody. And then another one by the name of Phoebe Cates, another nobody. Right. Oh. We're all sitting in this, like it was her house. It, it was like a condo house. And it was like, it was, it was, she was like an old cat woman. Like it was really not really, it was kind of disgusting. At any rate, she was notably one of the best managers in town. And she met with me at, right after Jim. So I was sitting in the, in the, in the waiting room with this, this guy by the name of Kevin Sorbo. And then he went on to obviously be Hercules and Jim Caviezel went on to be Passion of Christ. And Phoebe Cates went on to be, of course, Phoebe Cates. I mean, it does get bigger than that. And, <laughs> um, and she took me on. And then um, like three days later, four days later, she called me up and she goes, so I've got, an, I've got an audition for you. It's with a guy by the name of Peter. And I'm like, Peter who? She goes, Peter Engel. I'm like, who is this guy? And she goes, have you ever seen Say by the Bell? And I said, yeah. I said, I love Say by the Bell. Who doesn't love Say by the Bell? And um, I went into my Jewish there. <laughs> who doesn't yes, love Say by the Bell? <laughs> um, try the soup. What's wrong with the soup? Try the soup. Where's the spoon? <laughs> um, so I, I, I go into to Peter and I, I went through Robin Lippin and, and the casting process, but I finally got into Peter's office you know, for the, for the final test on it, like nine auditions later. Um, and uh, he goes, Tom, oh, you're the one everyone's bragging about. You're the Aaron Jackson. Why do you want to be on my show, kid? And you'd have to know Peter to know that that was a pretty damn good impersonation of him. And um, I got hired. Like it was literally, I had auditioned for Party of Five um, and I'd went down the wire with Scott Wolf and uh for the role of bailey and he went down the wire on dreams for the role of mark and um an offer came in you know i don't want to throw anybody under the bus but an offer came in for a small show called party of the party of five and it was a it was on a network um a small network called fox no one knew what fox was at the time they were renting space and it was a six episode it was a, a pilot plus five where i was offered 39 episodes of california dreams you do the math Hindsight, hindsight's 2020 party five went on to do stellar but i i i don't regret the decision well my team doesn't regret the decision um it was it was an, so that's my journey on on how i got on my show very I was very blessed right place right time amazing team huge support yeah and, and you go on to do the show and the show becomes like a, a phenom that whole like that whole era that there's a certain era of time where these shows like you bring up Saved by the Bell, California, these shows that, that have lived, that live on and have this crazy fandom. When the show ended and you put it in your back pocket and you carry on with your life, what was it like decades later when the idea of a reunion and getting together and performing the music came to you? We all stayed in touch for the most part, right? Um, Kelly and, and Jenny, Michael, William, Jay, and I, we stayed in touch. Jay um, moved to Australia and, and then Jenny and Kelly still lived in, in, in the LA area. And so did Michael and William. Um, when my show got canceled, I said, or our show, excuse me, I kind of stayed out in LA for, for a year or so, did a, a handful of pictures. I did a couple with Miramax and a couple other little um, indies. And I just kind of got sick of LA. I, I just got not, not of the, of the hustle and the bustle. God, I'm not afraid of work. I'll, I'll work until I can't stand anymore. Um, but I just didn't like, I didn't like the people. I didn't like the fakeness. You know, um, I, I, I didn't like augmentation. I didn't like people that, oh, I got to do this to be that, you know, I, I but the, I got to be this weight or I got to have this much hair or this color, you tan or, you know, like I wanted tattoos and I wanted, I wanted to be, 
I wanted to truly be me. I wanted to be Aaron. And when I was on the show, Mark was so opposite of who Aaron was. Like, I, like and that, I guess that's great acting, you know, because that, that's really what you do. You play something that you're not. It's legalized schizophrenia. You can be anybody you want to be as long as you believe it. And, um, but I had tattoos on the show and my ears were pierced on the show. I have an eagle on, the, on my back that's that big. And, and then I got the tattoo on my hip when I was still on the show. And I had to cover it with makeup you know, because that did not portray who Mark was. And I get that because that's what the writers wanted. But at the end of the day, like living in LA, it was like my manager at the time, Danielle Thomas, um, she was like, you know, we just got to keep up the imagery. Like you got a six pack, you know, let, let, let's let continue to do a lot of like that, that hunky uh, shirt off type stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but there's no meat in that. There's no grit in that. Like I want to act. Like I, I loved Mark. Don't get me wrong, but I, I want I want, I want to act. I want to, I want to Leo some shit. Pardon my French. Like that's what I want to do. I, you know, and, and I, I, um, so I was getting like these really gritty roles that I was being offered, but it did not line up with what NBC and what the team machine tiger beat super teen and YM wanted me to be. And I was okay, but it wasn't okay for me. So I, uh, I packed it up. I did the reverse of the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, and I moved from LA back to my small, to my small town for a little bit. Um, I moved back in with my daddy after being on a television show for so many years. And it wasn't a money issue. I had plenty of money. It was just, I missed being, I missed being a normal kid or a normal adult. I, I don't know that I was ever really a kid an adult cause it, I, I, it was all kind of blurry. Um, and, and I, I, I found myself again, you know, and cause I never partied. I was never a big drinker. I, I've never touched a drug in my 50 years of life. Um, outside of smoking and drinking, I've never, um, and I've seen it, I've seen everything. I've seen a mound of cocaine, this, the size of a car, maybe not that big. I exaggerate. The fish was this big. Um, but, um, but I, I just never did that. And nor did, did anyone in my cast, as far as I know, like we were all pretty much straight and narrow because I think Peter put the fear of God into us. Like he really did. But I wrote a Harley like on the show, but not on the show, but to and from the show. But then I wasn't allowed to ride my Harley anymore, you know, because it wasn't like if I got hurt, if I got injured kind of thing, I couldn't be on the show. Um, so I had to put a lot of who Aaron was, you know, back. And I, I got to get Aaron back when I moved back to Pittsburgh. And then shortly thereafter, um, I, I, uh, I, I met a girl, fell in love, um, and we had a couple of kids. And I moved to Florida and, um, her, my, my daughter's mother and I were together for, for a long time. And then one day it was just not there anymore. And we split and that happens. And we, we co-parented our daughters, um, which are behind me here and here. That's, that's when they were really, really young. Um, and then this was them in high school. Um, but now my, my oldest, uh, Brianna just graduated pharmacy school, um, is a doctor. She's getting married this Saturday. Um, and so it's, it's all happening. She just graduated from farm school last week. Um, and, uh, and then my, my next daughter, Aaliyah, um, she is, uh, she's going to be a nurse anesthetist. And then my, my, uh, soon to be wife, uh, my fiance's children, she has, uh, we have uh, a daughter that's, uh, uh, she's a rising senior, um, here in Florida in college. And then her son is a rising sophomore in college. And then our next daughter is a rising senior in high school. So that's, uh, so I've got five kids, you know, and I, I live my life and I make a movie and I make a television show and then I make another movie. Then I teach and then I do this. Um, so I bob and I weave when I can. I don't know if, how we got there, but we're there. Yo, so that's daughters. And that's Paul McCartney and my dad, wherever that that's is. So, that's the coolest thing ever. And I, I, <laughs> and I love that because I relate. I'm a teacher, but I sing and I act and I do, I, mean, I do this. And we all, if you have that bug where you can't sit still and you like to work, then you just work. Dude, I, I, my, my dad is like, I love my dad. He's 80 years old next week. Um, bless his heart. He's the best man in the world. Like I've got pictures of him everywhere and, and I've been on camera with my dad. My dad does radio shows with me. I'm just, I'm the best dad in the world. Um, but my dad could never sit down. He could never sit. Cause if he sat down, he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. And I find myself in that same boat right now. Like mm -hmm. if I sit, I sleep and, and Carla and I, uh, my fiance, like we're watching um, the best show ever known to man. This is us. Mm -hmm. The show is brilliant. And it's shot in and around Pittsburgh, which is, you know, my hometown. So a lot of the accent work that's coming out of that. Um, but we sit down and I fall asleep. So I find myself like sitting there, like multitasking something on my phone. And she's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just, if I don't, I'm going to fall asleep. Um, I get it. But, yeah, but I'm a teacher. What do you teach? More I, teach, 
I teach fifth grade history and science, but I also okay. teach musical. I teach musical theater at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark, New Jersey. And okay. I I know that you have your students. And what do you teach? I teach. Are you ready for it? Yes. You'd think I would teach math, right? You'd think no. You think science? So no. I actually no, I teach drama. I have I have. I'm a drama teacher. Um, I have. I, I teach at a very small, very small, from pre-K to senior, um, 800 body. You know, okay. Graduating class this year was like um, 68. So it's a small, small, small private school. But Aaron, I heard that you teach drama, which I mean, why wouldn't you teach drama? You you have the credits and the and the resume. And and well, it, what's the best part about it though um, is that I get I taught my kids. Like my, my children and my soon to be yes. stepfoot and went through my program. And when I started there, my predecessor, um, that's a big word for me, by the way, predecessor. It's like, it's like mayonnaise. That's a big word. Um, but I, uh, the program was nothing and I'm not putting him down, but it's just, there wasn't a student body. There was no one to really pull from. And when my headmaster, um, reached out to me, uh, and said, Hey, I want you to, would, would you be interested in this job? And I, it was not about the money. Like it, I, you know, again, not to brag, but I, I was, I was fine financially. Um, he's like, you know, this is what I can offer you. And I'm like, yeah, that's not, it's not the money for me. I'd said like, mm -hmm. is it my program? Like, do I get, do I get to do what I do and what I'm mm -hmm. capable of doing? And he said, yeah. I said, you trust me. Right. And he goes, yeah. I said, so I mean, like, jeans, t-shirt, baseball hat kind of guy, you know, tattoos, ears pierced and everything else. He goes, yeah, he goes, your program, you run it your way. And I've never had a micromanager. I've never, he's never really you know, they don't put their hands in my pot. They just kind of let me do what I do. And I took a program that had nothing. And now, and this is not self-proclaimed. This is what everyone else tells me. I have the best theater program in the state of Florida. And I've got the awards to back it up and the, the accolades and the trophies and the, and the kids that are going off to college and, you know, on Broadway and in films to, to say, you know, what? yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing something right. Maybe I'm making a difference. And that's, that's the blessing. Well, when I looked when I look you up and do some research, I, I saw that your program, I saw some of the things said about your program. You take your kids to New York, like you you do the work, like you are out here exposing them to the work. Dude, my 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 knees and hands are calloused, you know, they really are because like I don't have like in, in a private sector, I don't know if you teach public or private, public. but in a private sector, um, and these kids pay to go to the school. So you your budget, I have a fantastic budget. I'm, I'll never complain about my budget. The problem is within that budget is the expectation of production of what they, of the, what they expect. Um, and I, my style of theater and, and musical theater that I do is I'm, I'm a outside of the box kind of thinker. Um, when COVID came about, um, when we came back to school, you know, after the onlining, my, my headmaster said, so what are you going to do? Is you going to be able to produce theater? And I said, that's not the question. The question is, are you going to let me produce theater? Because if you're going to let me produce theater, I'm going to make it happen. So I'm going to reinvent the theater wheel. I got no problem. And he goes, yeah. He goes, we got to play the social distance CDC game. I'm like, sweet. Let's do it. Let's let's make this happen, playa. <laughs> Where did that, that come from, playa? Um, so I I ended up picking a show called Bang Bang You're Dead, and it was a, it's a it's a show about um, a school shooter, which is awful, and it's a it's a big thing about mine making you know, gun awareness and, and, and these crazy things that are happening in our world. And it's all about this boy being in prison for doing what he did and the reflection upon how he got there. So I read this script and I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. And my headmaster was like, Oh, shooter shows. Like it's in a school. And I said, I trust me, just, just trust me. And I ended up building a plexiglass box that was 10 by 10 by 10 that I put my lead actor inside of that. And I had my lights inside there and he was able to write on the walls and I had other actors coming in and around. And the only people that ever really heard the story was the jury. So you got the, 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 the 12 on the jury, you had the judge, you had um, uh, the clerk, a sheriff of this, or that, and you had a handful of other people that were in the room because of the, the egregiousness of the crime. Um, so I ended up only having 36 seats because that's how many people were in, in, in there so i had 36 people in in the full round completely six feet separated in this like black box style situation and my headmaster was like oh my god what were you doing this is amazing you know so i, I started reinventing theater then i did 12 angry jurors 
and I did it in a three quarter thrust, but I built a lighting system and, and a black and white checkerboard floor and a 10 foot table from hand from scratch. Um, so when I say calluses and blisters, it's because me and, and my partner and my, and my soon to be stepson, we built that stuff. That's what we did. Um, so that's my program. Well, I can promise you this, people who teach theater, people who teach in general, it's really a labor of love because yeah. the work you're doing is a labor of love. And then the fruit of the labor is not the paycheck. <laughs> it's the it's, it's to see these students thrive and fly and go on and give them as much room to grow as you possibly can. I, I've got a wall in my office. I've got the best room on campus or one of them anyway. It's, you know, it's three rooms big and I've got all these practice rehearsal rooms and everything else. Um, and I've got a wall in my part of my office that has nothing but the thank yous and it's you know it's, it's eight by ten wide and it's just all of these little thank yous and you know the amount of texts that i got on father's day from my students mm -hmm. like that that's the stuff that that's what melts your heart but we're not here about my teaching career we're here about well, i love your teaching career i do but we uh, need to do a whole episode you and i on teaching i want to fly I want to fly to Jersey and I want to come work with your students. Let's do it. Oh, please. Let's do come it. Work with my students. Come to Jersey. Come to any, we, we need all of the support and love and help we can get. We You just made a joke about Mean Girls before we went on the air. We just did Mean Girls uh, uh, in my theater company. And, you know, we're in Newark, New Jersey. So we were all people of color. We were right. all women cast and we put our own stink and, and yeah, spin on Mean Girls. And, it was so much fun, but their ideas inspire me. You know, they they come up with their life, their their right. their right. the work that they do is reminds me of why I fell in love with it to begin with. Well, I just closed Mean Girls. It was my it was my show that I did. Uh, it was my end of the year show at, at my school. So now, did you do the full cut or did you did you use Tina's cuts? We 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 did not do the full cut. We did the we were not allowed to do the full cut. Yeah, yeah. They were a little young, so we did it. How about you? Um, I got away with. I got away with some of them, but not all of them. There, there's a couple. I mean, I, I had, um, I don't know how PG this, this show needs to say, but I, I had, we don't, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I, I had the lips. I, I was able to turn the lips. I did that. My, my Damien, um, I only have three boys in my program. <laughs> you know? So my Damien um, is as, as straight as the day is long. He's actually dating, dating my stepdaughter. Um, but girl, like it was, it was there and he, he, he killed it. Um, but we, I got away with most of the jokes. Um, the, the, the wide set vagina one, that was one that had to leave. That's just, we, that my headmaster's like, you know, no, 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 we're not talking about that. You That's know. the line. That, that was the line. <laughs> we got to it. I, I tried it and it, nope, nope, did that. So. Well, Aaron, I'm going to need to stay up to speed. I want to know what you're doing next year. So we have I, to say. I can't that. announce it yet just in case any of my students watch because it is completely. But I can tell you, my my I do 19 shows a season. 19, one nine. Yeah, it's no, dude, it's no joke. Yeah, it's, well, I say 19 shows. I do um, four evenings of like beans and scenes and monologues and, and solos, songs and scenes from the heart, um, a December to remember, um, beans and screams. My students serve coffee and do all that stuff and perform for everybody. And then I do five one acts, like full on five competition one acts. And then I do two straight shows and then I do two musicals plus a musical theater musical. So, and then we have one-off evenings of like different uh, uh, performances going into thespians and then different performances going into competitions. So it's no joke. Yeah. So, so what we've learned is that Aaron Jackson is insane. And that is the, <laughs> that's about it. Sounds about right. But in the best way, in yeah. the best way possible, your, your students are so lucky uh, to have you and the passion that you have. And thank you. I guess we have to, I want to talk to you more about this. Can you come on and we talk more about this another day? Yeah, dude, I'll totally, I, I've got, I've got four minutes though. I can stay with you for four more. Where yeah, four more minutes. So yeah. the California Dreams Band is getting back together for two shows in Los Angeles. You're going to fly out to the West Coast July 12th, Friday night and Sunday, July 14th, right smack on Sunset Boulevard in, in Hollywood. Tell yes. us, what, are we, what can we expect? It is, it is three days of, of Michael, which is always, I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent with Michael Cade in one location. Um, you put Michael Cade, J. Anthony Frankie, Aaron Jackson, and Brent Gore in one location, and, and it, is, it is a recipe of success, disaster, and demise all in one. And then you bring the ever so beautiful Kelly Packard, Jenny Kwan, and Diana together in one space. You have seven 
well, six of the most beautiful people and what's left over of me as I get old. Um, but we have a concert Friday night uh, with a VIP uh, rehearsal that they can come join us on Thursday night. Friday is the concert and, and the meet and greet and a VIP early into the concert. We are doing a brunch on Sunday from 11 to 1230 and then a concert at 130 to 230. Um, an original, like all, all of the original dream sets, um, Brent Gore going to be doing uh, the lead vocals, uh, Jay doing a lot of backup, me doing what I can, you know, with, uh, with my, my old age and everything else. I think the voice and the hair and everything's chasing my feet right now. It's not doing so well, but I do what I can. Um, and it's just a rock and roll weekend where we get to give back to our fans. Hotel Ziggy, Friday and Sunday. So you got to go to CaliforniaDreamsBand.com and you could see the link below where you're watching or listening to us right now. So you could click it and make sure that you stay up to deep, deep. And they're so sweet. I, I, you know, when you guys were in New York, meeting people and spending time and taking pictures and the nostalgia of it all, it is a special, special weekend. We do. It was the most amazing weekend. Like, and I have, and I'll show you this real quick, even if I'm late for my meeting. Stay there. So I'm not uh, going to get fired. I got, I got this. So this, this will show you how much of a fangirl I am. Like I'm, I, I'm a fangirl, right? I have the I Love New York t-shirt, but what's on there? My entire cast's signatures. You got Kelly Packard, you got Jenny Kwan, you got William, you got Jay Anthony, you got, they're all here. And Michael Cade was like, you better not sell that thing on eBay. If I see that thing on eBay, I better get a cut of that. I'm like, Shut up. He's like, I'm telling you what, Sly Winkle and, and Michael Cade, identically the same. They was, they're cheap. So that is... So I, I, I mean, I have all my nostalgia, like, like just on my thing, like there's all my, my dream stuff and, you know, pictures my, of, of me from when I was on the magazine covers and yes. the, ori the original dreams. Like. It's, it's, it is, you know, it's, 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 it, it is the most amazing, it's the most amazing stuff in the world. Well, Aaron Jackson, your pleasure. We're so excited to have you here. CaliforniaDreamsBand.com this July. West Coast, come on out, fan out, be ready. And yes. we're ready to have you back to talk about all 19 shows you're going to produce in 10 months. Let's do okay. that. Let's do it. Thank you so much for being here. Your pleasure, your trip, and your inspiration. So I, I'm so grateful to spend some time with you. Let, let's do it. Um, get my, Feel free to um, ask Scott for my email and my phone number. Sure. I'm right. Give it to you now, whichever. Um, no, I would love, yeah, I would love to to do follow up with this or or come in. I'd love to come work with your students if you're doing something that 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 can you know that I can help a hand out to another kid. I would love that. Love that more than life itself. Yes, please. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna email Scott so you can get to your meeting, and I'll email Scott, and then I'll I'll get I'll, I'll email you. Awesome. I look forward to it, my friend. Be safe and Thank courteous. Thank you so much. Thank you so bye much, Harry. Bye. bye bye. Well, there you have it. You know, my friend Mike's uh, father manages a fish store like an aquarium and where you buy fish for your fish tank. And uh, some of the stars of the show were working there and went out to El California and became a big star. You know, it's amazing to me, the journey to California. And what's amazing to me even more is the second chapter, you know, like you could be on a television show and then you could teach drama. That's fascinating to me. And what's fascinating to me about it is that we think of like fame and television and all this stuff is so fancy and important, but sometimes life, you know, life, we just need life, you know, get married, have babies, teach the next generation. Uh, you know, we can pivot. I love that. Aaron Jackson, y'all, California Dreams. Oh, come on, young Robert. If you want more information about our show, then all you got to do is make sure you check check us out. Go to robertbannon.com, listen to us every single day on Broadway Podcast Network or wherever you listen to your, your, uh, your podcasts. Until next time, thanks so much for being here. The best is yet to come. Bye, everybody.